before we get into um, you know how to make uh, you know sauerkraut and kimchi, I want to address a larger question: uh, What is fermentation anyway, and uh, and why should we care about it? So um, you know, broadly speaking, fermentation is the transformative action of microorganisms. The number one reason why people ferment food is to preserve it. Specifically, acids and alcohol we can think of as biopreservatives. They're the products of biological processes that enable foods to be preserved, to be more stable. I'm constantly trying to think about uh, the context of food before everybody had a fermentation slowing machine. I'll bet that everybody in this uh, in this room has a fermentation slowing machine in their kitchen, and that's that's a refrigerator. That's really what a refrigerator uh, does: is it, is it slows down the microbial transformation of your food. With kefir, nothing like that. You just uh, you just put a couple of spoonfuls of the grains into a quart jar, pour some milk over them, leave it on your counter for 24, 48, some people would say 72 hours, depends, you know, acids accumulate over time, it just depends how sharp you like the flavor. Just leave it uh, on the counter, a couple times in that period, give it a little shake, just move it around. Think about meat. We think of meat as a very highly perishable food, but um, people developed all sorts of techniques to make the meat stable for longer. And you, when you walk into a delicatessen and you see a salami hanging from a string, uh, you know, just in the ambient temperature of the room, that's due to the uh, well, partly to uh, to salt but also partly to acidification that develops during fermentation. So, so, so acids and alcohol are examples of biopreservatives that, uh, that, that make foods more stable. The air is what enables molds to grow, and by getting the vegetables submerged under water, we're protecting them from air. But there's always a surface. There's always you know, a, 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 a place where, um, where, where the liquid that you're protecting the vegetables under meets the air. So this is a very cleverly engineered solution. Um, that, you know, that, that surface is a place where molds can happen. And I'll bet that when we get to the Q&A part of this, uh, a lot of people's questions might be about surface molds, because that's the number one um, problem that people encounter when they ferment vegetables. And it's something that you know, just people have always had to contend with when they deal with this. And you know, the, 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 the molds that grow on the surface, you, you skim them away, and your sauerkraut is still edible. You don't need to worry about that. You fill up the vessel, and each time you think that you have filled up the vessel, you want to put it down somewhere and press down, or you could use a nice tool like this and really get it. So everyone get an idea of uh, what I mean when, I'm, when I say submerged under liquid? Fermentation changes foods nutritionally in a number of ways. Um, the, 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 the first uh, change is, is what I call pre-digestion. The fermentation organisms um, uh, break the food down, begin to digest it before it enters our mouths and our digestive tracts. And I think that, I, I think that the food that really illustrates this pre-digestion idea the most vividly is, uh, is the soybean. Fermentation changes foods nutritionally in some other ways also. Additional nutrients are generated uh, uh, during the life cycle of the um, organisms that are, that are pre-digesting the food. So across the board, fermented foods have higher levels of B vitamins than the raw foods you begin with. This essentially amounts to you know, an accumulation of microbial bodies, living bodies and dead bodies in the food. Like if anyone's ever used brewer's yeast or nutritional yeast, people use that as a nutritional supplement. It's because the yeast itself um, is composed of B vitamins. So, you know, across the board, ferments have higher levels of B vitamins. And the ferments that we'll be focusing on today, fermented vegetables like sauerkraut and kimchi, contain wonderful live cultures. And these cultures are the same kinds of bacteria that we all have in our gut, that human beings evolved with, that are passed on to us in our earliest infancy, and they are critical to our ability to digest food. So the bacteria in our gut serve a number of really important uh, functions in our lives. 